Hello and welcome to my video. Uh, right, off we go then, straight into it. This is um, a, a little quick sketch that I did at the end of a Zoom class. Um, I don't know, a few weeks back, maybe six weeks, something like that. Uh, it's dry enough now for me to finish off. And what I want to do, uh, there, there won't be much brushwork, um, is just a few dabs of uh, green just to sort of form the leaves a bit more. It looks okay on the video, I think, but uh, I just, I'm just not quite happy with it. And um, so that's what I'm going to do. It's about 15 inches wide uh, by... What, how deep is that? Um, the depth is almost 11 inches. And uh, quite a, you know, a comfortable little size to work on. And this is one of the paintings that I'll be giving away uh, to um, one of my patrons. And in fact, uh, Deborah, this is yours. And um, let's just see what happens. I'm, I'm not going to be using much oil for this. And literally, all I'm doing is just dabbing a little bit of paint on here. And uh, I just want to sort of... I don't want to get into detail. I mean, I won't be painting detail. I'll be giving the, well, the illusion of it. Um, because I'm just making texture and a lot of detail is just, well, if, you know, if you think about it, any painting is made out of blobs, isn't it? They're all blobs. So, um, let's just add a few blobs. There we go. Right now. Oh, and I must, I must say, um, quick reminder to myself. Um, I'm going to be doing a collaboration video, uh, just to remind you, you may already know about this, uh, a watercolour artist by the name of Robert Mee, uh, M W -E. very good watercolour artist. He's already done his part of the collaboration video and sent it to me, um, and I was sort of not well, and... Uh, just had to keep putting things off. But anyway, I'm feeling better now, so uh, I'm going to get on with that. Uh, so it'll be his interpretation of a um, painting by George Ennis, um, a very well-known American tonalist painter. And uh, this, is the, this is the picture that we're going to emulate. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, we're not copying it, we're just using it for inspiration. So he's doing a watercolour version of it, and I'm doing a um, oil paint version. There. Now, I think I might have overdone that bit, but it's, I think it's OK. Yeah, that's all right. The light, the light is flooding onto that bit there, so I think I'll be just about OK. Have a little, few little dabs. There, I just wanted to get a bit of attention in that area, really. Um, and I think I will do something to the, uh, the ground also. And there's a little bald patch just there. This is a, this is originally, you see, this was a sap green and red ochre painting. And there's a little bit of, um, a little bit of the sort of red ochre showing through there. So I'm just going to darken that down a bit with a bit of, sap green oh now that gives me that brings me to something else now um uh someone asked me a question about uh is is the paint i use transparent or opaque do you know i never thought about it and quite frankly i would call sap green opaque it's a strong color apparently it's um translucent i would never have guessed it, the reason I use it is it's the darkest version of sap green I've ever come across. It's a bit rattly, isn't it? Why are we rattling so much? That's better. Uh, so, yeah, it's, um, apparently it is. And also, the, the person wanted to know um, which colours I use, which I think I mention in almost every video. Uh, but I'll just say it again. My general colours that I use are sap green red ochre, Japanese red if I'm going to use red, 
or it doesn't matter, you can use any red you like, I just happen to use that one. Um, Payne's Grey, Royal Blue, Ultramarine Blue, occasionally a bit of Yellow Ochre, Titanium White. And that really is it. I don't use much other than that. And I do mix them up a bit. Um, you know, I don't use them straight from the tube. Although, I have to say, you, you can get away with that. Uh, certain um, types of painting. Uh, you know, you can use paint straight from the tube because, think of it this way, someone at some time has mixed that colour. Even if you don't mix it on your palette, you know, you it's been mixed. And secondly, uh, I like to mix on the painting because that's where it's going to end up. Loads of people would disagree with that. Uh, that's okay, you can disagree. And um, let's just have a little bit there, I think. So uh, yeah, that's what I that's what I use. Okay, right, this is coming out okay. Let's just soften that into the tree a bit more. A little bit. It's a little bit too sudden. That's okay. Now, what else am I going to do? Very little. A little bit down the bottom. So we'll do a little bit of. So uh, similar sort of colours. You could. I mean, you can use the same colour. You could use some. Um, Light green, which is the one I'm using here. Light green with a little bit more blue added. That will give you an interesting green for the um, foliage on the ground. Let's just do that and see what we get. Okay, so a little, little bit of colour on there. And obviously, the you know, things on the tree hang down. Things on the ground, well, hang up. They, they grow upwards. So there's an upward-shaped um, temporary brush. And just a few little planty like shapes here. Once I finish this, uh, which will be in a minute, literally, uh, I'm going to paint um, a very simple long landscape. I've got a bit of um, off cut board, and uh, I'll use that. It's going to be very thin and long, it'll be a, a sketchy look. Okay, there's a few vegetables down there. I'm going to have to work on my speech. <laughs> I'm going to have to work on my speech. Get my get rid of this whistle. Okay, so there, there's a that's quite a nice little bit of little bit of weedery. So, what else are we going to do? I think a little bit of you see I've got I've got this nice contrast here that's where you know I'm pulling people into that hopefully uh, pulling people into that area attempting to pull people into that area let's just get a bit of titanium white here now this, I'm just going to put it on my finger. A little tiny bit of titanium white, because I think I want just... So I'm going to put it on and take it off, literally. So it's just a few little bits of... A few bits of white on the trunk of the tree. Don't need to go completely over the top. It's a tiny amount of paint. So uh, it's easily controlled. So I'm almost taking it all off again. Is that enough? I think that might be it for the tree. Good. Now, what? I, yeah, what I'm thinking of, you see, I've got all this high intensity white here. And I think it needs to be echoed there. Um, And again, it's just a little bit of white on my finger. And you see, now, did I just put some dark there that's wet? I don't think I did. Right, I'm going to just intensify that a little bit more. Tiny bit there. 
And then, when I say echo, it's, um, it's not a word that you, you, you hear much now with paintings. It's uh, definitely from my um, student days, which is about a thousand years ago. Um, but it's it, when they said, oh, echo that colour somewhere, okay, that would mean somewhere probably there. And the reason you do it is to make sure the viewer is in no uh, doubt that this tree, or this cloud, I beg your pardon, this cloud goes behind that tree. Obviously it does. And um, you notice there are no sky holes here. Now, some trees have sky holes, some don't. They're so dense, you don't get a chance to get a sky hole. In other words, a little bit of white every, every now and then. Uh, and it's not something I worry about because... Well, what's the point of worrying about anything, really? So there we are. There's a sort of slightly misty back end, if that's a word, uh, to that tree. And I think that may almost be it, except for one thing. Now, I did, I did pull a bit of red out on my palette. Do I want to use red? No, I don't think I do. Right. Uh, but the other thing I do have is a, bit, a little bit of primary yellow. And the primary yellow is for the land. Again, uh, I'm going to use my finger. And we have a light area there where the, where the sun, I guess, is hitting the land. What's well, going to be the sun, isn't it? Uh, but let, why, not, why not we just intensify it just a little bit? Try and make it a little bit more interesting. Now, this really is a transparent colour. Absolutely no doubt with this one. Okay. And I don't want to overdo it because I want attention on the tree. So a tiny little bit here. There. Okay, so that's, that's now um, as ready as it's going to be. So it'll just need varnishing, and uh, I'll send that off to you as soon as I can, Deborah. Right, number two. This is um, a sort of freestyle cloudscape. And it's on a kumi plywood, five millimetres thick, and the size is, uh, it's as near as damn it, ten and a half inches that way, and thirty-one and a half across. It's, it's a very flat, obviously, you know, I'm going to state the obvious again, I keep doing that. Um, it's obviously very flat, but certain landscapes, I think, actually look quite good if they're long and flat, particularly if there's no real feature uh, you know, no mountains. It's just going to be very, very simple bit of land along the bottom there. Well, it wouldn't be along the top, would it? Um, you can see a line here. Um, that'll disappear. That's just a mend in the wood. Um, and I sanded it and it just shows through. But by the time I put paint on it, you won't see that. So off we go now. I'm going to base this on a sky um, that I saw a few weeks ago out for an evening walk, and there was this sky. And um, let's just see what happens. So royal blue, oh, here's the colours that I've got. Quick, quick dangle that in front of you quickly. Um, royal blue, paints grey, white, uh, red ochre, sap green, primary yellow, um, and that is not Japanese red. It's actually, what did I use? Cadmium orange, I think. Uh, no, orange vermilion. Quite a nice colour. And I might be, yeah, I will use that actually. I wasn't thinking of necessarily using it, but I will. In fact, I'm going to add it to the blue. So let's see what we get. We'll get a nice sort of very interesting sort of purpley lilac y colour. 
let's just put that on then see what we see what it looks like it's the best way to do it really just make it up as you go along so I think um, I think we'll have that there so don't forget you know when you're painting clouds it's how I know it uh, I have to step back and listen to myself sometimes but um, it, it does make sense if you actually literally take on what I'm saying don't paint clouds when you're painting clouds don't paint clouds not until later anyway start off just by putting color on a board there we are that's, that's actually a very nice color and what happens to the top edge if I do that what actually happens see, see what gets interesting in that bit there uh, it may not be interesting to you to me it's absolutely riveting and uh, because I can see the potential in those shapes and you can see the movement you can see the wind paint the wind and uh, let's put a little bit more of the orange vermilion on the brush so just to sort of introduce another another tone so this idea right let's just cover a few things here this idea of you don't mix on the painting you mix on the palette nah don't you can totally forget that it's just this is my personal opinion so don't send me any nasty threats and comments i do get some nasty threats <laughs> um so when you when you start blending colors like this on a board you are actually mixing and blending on there uh, because this color was not made on the palette it was made here so there you go that simplifies that doesn't it and um now i'm going to start throwing a little bit of white on there now the white that i'm using has not a, has not only got no oil added it's also come from a tube that has been left open for a few weeks i do that deliberately um, because it gives me a nice sticky white which is what that is so there's a little bit of oil on the rest of the color there which is all i want really there we are so this yeah one summer's evening my wife and i went for a stroll and there was this sky and i remember it quite well it was sweeping and it had it had wind in the sky there's a little bit of wind but it also had all these nice colors and every now and then you see i like to paint something totally the only reference I've got for this is what's in my head. So uh, I don't have a picture to look at. I retain stuff. And um, it, it's, uh, it's a way of keeping what I do as loose as possible. A lot of artists do this. Uh, that, a friend of mine, a uh, Facebook friend and Instagram friend, um, James Norton, very, very good English landscape painter. I mean, to say very good is an understatement. He's, he's, um, he's brilliant. And he paints stuff just from, you know, he pulls it out of the ether, literally. He wanders around the countryside, has a look at the weather and the conditions, and goes back to his studio and produces masterpieces. Simple as that, really. He's a masterpiece maker. And uh, it's worth looking for his stuff. I'll put a link below. If you look on the internet just for James Norton, you'll come up with some, an actor. And as far as I know, that actor doesn't paint. So, uh, worth looking at. See now, what I'm, let me tell you what I'm not doing. I'm not clogging it up with paint by doing all this business. You know, I'm not trying to fill all the gaps between the brush strokes. They'll, that will come later. And um, it's not something you actually need to worry about. Also the landscape for this type of painting. See, because this is, this is like a study. It's a study in clouds. 
I do remember there was a dark, there was a dark cloud and it came up like so, that was it, yes, like that. That's what grabbed me, I think, this sort of movement of colour um, or tone. It, it was actually quite grey, it wasn't particularly um, colourful. Um, a little bit of something across there. Now, landscape, of course, doesn't have to be green, does it? You know? Colours change through the day. The landscape can become quite blue. So I think we'll do that today. It's an evening painting. So um, as the evening comes, the colours all get muted. So let's just mute away. Now if you're painting like this and you're not having fun, um, you need to figure out how to have a bit of fun. Don't, don't think of it as, I'm painting and it'll go wrong and I'll be depressed. Don't, you, that's not going to get you anywhere. I mean, I can't stop you thinking that. People will think what they want. But um, if, you pay, if you're just starting out and you're painting something like this and you, uh, you're struggling, um, it's not the end of the world really, is it? It's just painting. So I keep telling people this because it's an important thing you've got to get by. Once you actually successfully lose that idea that it's got to be perfect first go, very few paintings are perfect first, first sort of stab at them, you know. You, you've got to work at it a little bit. But turn the work into play, like here. You know, I'm playing, I'm not really, this is not a serious exercise. Now I want to add more white, but this is this brush is getting a little bit, you know, that colour. And uh, what you don't want to do also is fight the paint. So if I just keep trying to get that white, it won't work. So what I have to do is get a bit more of this stodgy white here. What I've got to do is get a clean brush. Just throwing the paint in. Here's a, a dirt cheap brush from um, a Cultura shop here in France. It's made by Monali. Uh, unbelievably cheap. And again, this is white paint that has no oil added. So let's get some, um, let's get a few shapes in there. You could do this with a really big brush. Um, I usually do, in fact, but I thought I might as well quite show you uh, what you can get with a small brush too, because the problem, the, the problem I find with small brushes is that you spend half the day sort of doing all this, you know? With, with a big brush, you can do this in uh, less than half the time, just with a couple of sweeps. But it does, it does give you, um, you know, smaller, smaller shapes within the, within the cloud, which is quite nice occasionally. And I, of course, I'll be going over this with a big brush later to do some blending out or blurring. It's blurring. I want a few bright spots. Now, the bright spots will go on with a palette knife. But you can sort of tickle a few in um, with a brush. As long as you touch the surface lightly, don't don't gouge the white into the um, colour. Let it sit on top. It'll sit on top better with a palette knife. But uh, this will um, you can also get this effect. As long as you know, like I say, don't be, don't be heavy-handed. There's a, there's a time and a place for being heavy-handed. So let's have lots and lots of little textures going off. There, and I'll get these down as quickly as I can because then I can go over it with a big brush and get it to another level quite fast. And also, if I, if I work quickly, I won't get um, bogged down. Um, 
in any particular area. So, if I, you know, literally just a couple of marks here and there. The thing is, you see, this is a this is a vast expanse of landscape, um, and you you get that feeling because it's a very flat painting. So it it sort of um, exaggerates the width. It gives you the feeling of you know um, being out in a very um, a big sky country type landscape, you know. There's a, people say, oh, I live in big sky country. Well, it's always interested me. Usually big sky country means that actually you're, you live quite high up and the land around you drops away. So you're on, not like a mountain necessarily, but a raised part of the planet. And um, it gives the feeling of the sky being bigger. And uh, there are a few places <laughs> in England, there are a few places like that, not many, but because um, it's a very tight, enclosed sort of place. Uh, it's different from, I mean, France. France has some extremely big sky places. And the States, um, I saw a few when I was over there uh, 10 years ago, whatever it was. Let's go back, that'd be nice. But the uh, can't at the moment. Right, so there we go. Some nice sort of quite simple shapes. Literally, you know, if I if I could swim, this would be freestyle swimming. I can't swim, uh, so I'll go for freestyle painting instead. Now I'm going to go back to the big brush again because I want to um, I want to get a bit of a little bit more red and grey and shove it up here. I say shove, you know. <laughs> it's not really shoving it, is it? It's um. Carefully positioning the colours, as you can see. Right, so there's my dark bit. Think of it like that. There's a light bit, there's a dark bit. And if it looks alright, wonderful. If it doesn't look alright, keep painting. It'll start to look okay. I'm not mixing the colours too much. I've got a nice lump of white board showing through there. And I'm probably going to leave that for now because I'm going to put white on it. Um, but uh, let's just see see what I do. Like literally, it's like conducting music, you know. Da, 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 da. I might have some white cloud there, so I won't go mad with the this purpley. It's a strange colour, Payne's Grey, Payne's Grey, Royal Blue and Orange Vermilion and that's what you get and it's actually quite nice. Now, let's have, see so you've got a bit of dark sky at the top there but you can also have a dark bit at the bottom. I have to ask myself, do I want it dark down here next to the land or will I use white. I'm going to use dark here. So let's just have something there. For the heck of it. For the heck of it covers an awful lot of decisions, you know. <clears throat> Right, that's looking interesting. So, um, what I'm going to do now is get a big brush. When I say big, I don't mean vast. This is um, eight centimetres wide. And because people ask, you know, what size brushes I use, I know that not everybody understands centimetres, but eight centimetres in inches is basic, well, it's three inches. 
three inches wide. Um, and it's quite chunky that way. If I find the camera, oops. That way, that's quite thick there. It's um, around half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Now that might be useful to some people. Um, it doesn't matter to me at all. I just pick up the brush and use it and try not to think about it too much. Try not to think of anything much. In fact, the older I get, you know, the, <laughs> the more appealing that is. Wake up in the morning, don't think about anything too much. Just get up, have as much fun as possible. Paint some pictures. Rub the cat's tummy, and that's basically it. Right. Okay. So now I haven't put white on there yet, so uh, that'll, I'll, I'll come back to that. So all I'm going to do now, the usual thing with the blur, the blurring, like so, and just see what happens. So don't forget, you'll, you'll see paint residue on the tip. Um, but it's not like I'm dragging tons of paint around. It's literally, I'm just touching it and softening it. Very, very light touch. And also where it connects to the landscape. Because this is such a simple landscape. I'll add something to it. You know, it's going to be unbelievably simple, but what I want at the moment is the blend between the two to be nice and um, nice and squidgy. It looks a little bit like water, but it's not going to be water. So there's my there's my blending or blurring brush, and um, if I give it a good wipe, you can see that some paint comes off. It's not like dripping with paint; it's literally a stain. That's all it is. I know that I could add white to that and it wouldn't actually affect, uh, you know, the colour that's on there wouldn't affect the white. Not so as you'd notice anyway. Right, so now um, back to the white. And uh, again, this is literally white with no oil. Now, as I'm adding the white to this, it's starting to pick up this grey colour which I don't particularly want, so I'm just going to give this a good wipe. No sinners, no turpentine. You don't, you don't need it. Okay. When I was, when I was a student, I used, to, um, I used to really like the smell of genuine turpentine, you know, real stuff. It, it had, um, I don't know, I found it quite alluring. I wasn't, I wasn't a turpentine sniffer. I uh, wasn't interested in, do <laughs> in doing that, but I just liked the smell. Maybe it just reminded me of the fact that I was going to paint, you know, and I was, I was completely besotted with painting, which I think helps when you're young. If you have a certain besottedness with any subject when you're, you know, at a certain age, um, it helps learn. You, you, you absorb more. I associated the smell with painting, um, and it's not a it's not a nasty smell, but you know, now um, I don't want I don't want to smell it at all, frankly. And don't forget, if you um, if you buy the thinners that have no odor, um, the gases that are coming off it are still there. So you might not be able to smell it, but it may not be doing you any good. So. probably best not to use it. Okay. So far, I don't see any animals in the sky. They always seem to pop up, but at the moment we seem to be wildlife free. Of course it's not, I'm not actually painting animals, it's that pareidolia thing. I often think I pronounce it wrong, but maybe I don't. Uh, fascinating thing, though. So, there we are. It, see, now, what I'm after is uh, a looseness. Once you can get a looseness 
particularly in the sky, because there's, apart from water, you know, there's not a lot on this planet that's as loose as clouds. They're pretty, um, pretty loose things, aren't they? Right, so we're getting, we're getting an interesting sky. Now if you, if you, um, as I say often, if you can relax uh, as you paint skies, uh, it's actually quite difficult to, um, to go wrong. Um, don't forget, you mustn't care. There we go, nice bit of... Nice bit of cloud. Right, so let's have a little, uh, little blur and then we'll go back to um, the landscape, maybe. Do I even need to do anything to it? I could leave it so that it, it, you're not quite sure what it is. Is it, is it sea or is it land? I don't know. Maybe that wouldn't make a nice painting. Maybe people need to know. And one thing I will do before I do any more smudging is just put something up here. Don't forget to take them off the edge. There we go. Right, so a quick bit of this. Now, uh, just a reminder, the, the reason I keep showing you clouds is because um, I actually believe that if you're a beginner, once you've figured out clouds, um, your whole attitude will paint, to painting will change. Uh, because you'll realise, oh, you can do that. When you, can, when you think that, you see, you'll go on to landscapes. If you struggle with clouds, get the clouds right. If you struggle with landscapes, still get the clouds right. And then you'll figure out what to put underneath the clouds. What you don't want to do, till you've got a lot of experience, Right, what you don't want to do is paint a sky like this and then start painting a highly intricate landscape with a small brush. Don't do it, trust me. Uh, they won't go together. They've both got to have the same loose feeling. And um, I am actually going to add a little bit of sap green and red ochre. Uh, to the land. Well, I've made space for my brushes. Oops. Okay, now the brush that I'm going to use for the landscape. This is the, this is the original sky brush, right? So uh, I'm just going to take off some of that paint. There's not much on there, but just sort of pull off. Literally, when I say pull off, I like that. Okay, so there's, there's a bit of blue on that. So I don't know how long I've been painting, but there's a, a very quick skyscape. Just so, just goes to show once you once you relax, um, it just will eventually fall into place. Right, so. Um, Sap green, red ochre. I might put in some. Will I put some paints grey? Okay, so this is this greeny sludgy colour which you get popping up in a lot of my paintings. And um, let's see what we can do. I'm just. I'm not gonna. I don't have a a landscape in mind, but I'll just sort of do my usual thing that will just give the impression of the sort of landscape that I'm surrounded by here, which is actually quite agricultural. And th these weird copses that you get on the tops of hills. So let's just sort of... Let's just sort of do it and see what happens, really. 
How's that looking? Hmm, interesting. Foggy morning, perhaps. I think I'm sort of making a, a reasonable job of keeping out of the way today. Okay, so this is a sort of weird little, very simple landscape. Just a, you know, little bit of perspective. I suppose it could be like a, a, a slight mist on the ground, so that's where you get that bluey tinge. Uh, I mean, the, what you could do, you see, instead of setting out to paint something, <laughs> Now this is this is worth knowing. So you set out to paint something with fog, a misty landscape. It's actually quite a tricky thing to paint. So if I was painting a foggy landscape, I would actually um, add the fog later when it's dry, because life's too short for the anguish. Okay. So what you what what you do is you paint away, and then withhold the title until you finish. Let people know what the title is when you've got to the end. Pick what it looks like. And uh, people will say, oh, that's an amazing. That's a whatever landscape. Okay. Take away the pain and the anguish. And uh, what is it? Work clever, not hard. There we are. There's a nice little... Little sort of thingscape. It's a new a new genre of uh, landscape painting. A thingscape. Now these these um, copses or woods or whatever you want to call them, don't separate them completely from each other. So let let them link. Otherwise, you'll end up with what looks like little islands everywhere, and you don't want that, trust me. It will not look right. Actually have them connected in some way. And that may actually be almost it. And if it is it, I'll get this onto YouTube. And that means that I can talk, well, type, type with you uh, later this evening. So there we are, the illusion of land, the illusion of detail in the landscape. Literally. It's a mood, a mood scape. Nothing particularly going on in there, just an interesting little bit of sky, I hope. And some bumpy bits at the bottom, which could be mistaken for trees. Right, so one last look at the sky before I um, close. Right, so a bit of white. No no added oil um, and uh, I'm going to use the palette knife and I'm going to just sort of add what I hope will be some interesting twinkly bits of cloud. So let's have a few there, let's have coming around there maybe. Because the thing about adding the clouds with this is the paint sits on top of all the other colours. It's precarious, you don't want to push it too much, but it means that when I blur it again, hopefully, it won't mix with the underlying colours. If it does, it doesn't really matter. Let's have a little bit more, something here. Don't forget, paint the wind.
keep the movement in your sky. I was I was thinking of adding a, a, a light blaze along there, but I'm not going to. That was just a, a whim. Okay. So back to my blurring brush. And that will be it. So, uh, as usual, if you want to come to a Zoom class, the details will be below. If you want to be a Patreon, a patron on my Patreon page, which will actually keep me alive, well, it'll help anyway, um, please feel free to do so. There'll be a link for that too. Uh, what else? Uh, whoop, uh, yeah. Great big bristle. Right. Um, yeah, uh, my, my website will actually uh, give you all the details about Zoom classes. And of course, if you want to, next year, next year meaning 2024, if you want to come here for lessons, uh, the details will be there for that. And what else? Let's just have a little bit of that there. Can't think of anything else really. The Zoom, the Zoom classes um, are very relaxed. You don't have to paint. If you come to it, you can sit and watch. Uh, a few people always paint, usually about four or five. Um, but you know, you don't feel you have to. And you can, uh, and then just not show the painting. You can just keep it to yourself. But uh, you know, you're not expected to hold up your work put it that way. Okay, I think that might be epic sky for the day with slightly troubled landscape. <laughs> there we are. I um, hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>